so welcome back to another video and today we are going to talk about a very important topic that is gene regulation and in that we are going to talk about the gene silencing by microRNAs or miRNAs so what are microRNAs they look something like this they have uh, this stem loop sort of structure where this is the stem which is two strands of the RNA hydrogen bonded to one another and it has got this loop sort of structure it is also called the hairpin loop structure so a mature micro RNA is 21 to 22 nucleotides long and it is formed, it is made from a precursor which is called the primary microRNA. So what happens is that this is the primary transcript which is generated from the DNA. This primary transcript is cleaved at a certain position and forms the pre-microRNA. And again, this pre microRNA is processed by cleaving it in certain position. And finally, that forms the mature microRNA, which can function in the gene silencing. Like I said, this is a hairpin shaped secondary structure, and it is required for the gene silencing. So, this is a broad view of the microRNA and how it looks and where the cuts, where the cleavages that occur, where are those cleavages made. Now, two proteins of uh, utmost importance are drosha and dicer. The first cleavage is done by drosha and the second cleavage is done by dicer. So, if this is the, uh, this is the primary microRNA, this is the primary miRNA. First, this would be cleaved and made to the pre-microRNA by drosha. And finally, that would be made into the mature microRNA by the aid of dicer. And this mature microRNA would go on to silence certain genes. Now, this drosha, this requires a particular sequence which is not hydrogen bonded to one another in order to recognize the primary microRNA. And this is the part. You can see over here, this part is not hydrogen bonded to one another. And this part is recognized by drosha. And drosha can make a cut where it cleaves off this portion. This, this cleaving is done at about 11, at about 11 base pairs, 11 base pair from the end point of the microRNA or the primary microRNA. Now this 11 base pair is discarded and what is left, what is left from that cleavage including the loop, this is the pre microRNA. Now dicer comes in and it makes a cut where it tends to remove this loop structure. So this loop is removed and degraded and finally what is left, this is the mature micro RNA which moves on to silence certain genes. Right, so first we'll see the processing that is done by drosha. Now drosha is not doing it alone what it does, it makes a complex with this protein which is called DGCR8. 
this whole complex of drosha and dgcr8 this is called the microprocessor complex this microprocessor complex binds to the primary microRNA by the help of the portion that is not hydrogen bonded and you can see over here this is the processing center or the cleavage site after the cleavage is done from the 11 base pair from the end of the microRNA we are left with these two portions one that is containing the loop part we call it the pre microRNA and the other part that is the 11 base pair part that is cut is degraded so this portion of the pre microRNA this portion now drosa what it does it has this peculiarity that the end of the pre microRNA would have a 3 prime overhang now this 3 prime overhang at the end of the pre microRNA this is important by the protein Dicer which recognizes this 3 prime overhang of the pre microRNA and makes it and makes the cut at the loop of the stem loop so this 3 prime overhang is important for Dicer next Dicer looks something like this it has got this RNAs 3 domain actually two of them two RNAs 3 domain and these RNAs 3 domains they can recognize and cut double stranded RNA this is the peculiarity so RNAs 3 domain two RNAs 3 domain and a PAS domain now this PAS domain is named after the proteins that contains this domain or the protein where this domain was first discovered so P stands for PV A stands for Argonaut and Z stands for Zueli so these th these three proteins these were the proteins where past domains were first uh, discovered and so the domain is named after them so what this PAS domain does like I said something is required to recognize this 3 prime overhang left by the uh, DROSA DGCR8 complex so PAS domain recognizes this 3 prime overhang this is my 3 prime this is my 5 prime so PAS recognizes this and this blade part or the RNA's 3 domain like I said they can make cuts on double stranded RNA they make the cut on this loop structure and this loop is degraded now what we're left with we're left with something like this the loop structure is degraded and this is finally my mature micro RNA right so now I have the mature micro RNA which is hydrogen bonded with the 3 prime overhang and this finally can move into another complex which is called the risk complex which is called the risk complex and make certain processing which sort of silences the target genes or the target mRNAs now this risk complex is the abbreviation for RNA induced silencing complex so this risk what it does it recruits a protein which is called the Argonaut protein and this risk Argonaut complex it binds the mature microRNA so this is the mature micro RNA after the mature um, the mature micro RNA is bound to the risk and Argonaut complex there is 
this blue strand which is called the passenger strand and the red strand is called the guide strand so argonaut what it does it degrades this passenger strand first what it does it uh, removes this passenger strand by denaturing the two strands and finally this passenger strand is degraded so now we are left with one strand of the microRNA which is bound to the risk and the argonaut complex this is the argonaut complex this is the risk complex and this single stranded microRNA this can move on and bind to its target mRNA let's say this is the target mRNA so this uh, this guide strand along with the risk complex and the uh, and the argonaut protein this moves on and binds to the target mRNA and we know that the mRNAs they have a lot of adenine residues at the end and this is called the polyadenylation tail what this complex does this risk argonaut complex what it does it makes a cleavage it makes a cleavage and removes this poly a tail removes this poly a tail now this poly a tail was a post transcriptional modification and this poly a tail was required to protect the mrna which is this the mrna from certain exonucleases that can cleave the mrna so now the mrna is not having any poly a tail so it is it is very easily it is very easily recognized by exonucleases in the cytoplasm and that can degrade the whole mrna and that can degrade the whole mrna now as the whole mrna is degraded no protein from that mrna can be produced so that is how the microRNAs can silence certain genes by targeting the mRNA and degrading that mRNA with the help of the risk argonaut complex.